New Jack, originally known as Jerome Young, stood out as one of the most formidable and unpredictable professional wrestlers in history. Infamous for his brutal and excessive performances, he possessed a dangerous inclination towards violence that set him apart from his peers. Would I do it again? Yeah, I'd do it again. I'll stab the shit out of somebody else again if that shit happened to me again in the ring. Because I don't got sight in my right eye because of big, stupid fucking ass. Despite his narcissistic tendencies and limited exposure in the wrestling mainstream, New Jack managed to carve out a remarkably prolific career in his notoriety. Born on January 3rd, 1963 in Greensboro, North Carolina, New Jack endured a challenging upbringing marked by domestic violence. His alcoholic father and unfaithful mother frequently engaged in violent altercations, with one of the most well-known incidents being when New Jack's father stabbed his mother several times due to infidelity. He was cheating on my pops. And somebody called him and told him that they saw her in the car with somebody. And when she came home from work, he stabbed her. New Jack quoted in his book, They yelled, they cursed, they accused, they threatened. I just sat around and watched like it was another TV show or something. It had happened before and I was pretty sure it would end soon, at least for the time being. This sort of thing was always starting and stopping at our place. However, despite all this, Young still liked his father and considered him a pretty cool dude. But he would unfortunately pass away from a heart attack when Young was only five. I mean, I love my dad, you know what I mean? Me and my dad got along good, you know? So when he died, I mean, I was sad, you know what I mean? Witnessing firsthand the horrifying consequences of his parents' actions, Jerome's childhood was marred by trauma. Moving frequently during his early years, he and his mother jumped from eviction notice to eviction notice. My mom would have a different guy in the house every night. You know what I mean? It was like somebody's husband she was sleeping with, you know, and it was just crazy. We had to listen to her have sex. Young attended dozens of schools before ultimately graduating from D.M. Therald High School in Atlanta, Georgia, where he displayed a natural talent for football, particularly in pass coverage. Despite this, New Jack chose a different path, getting involved into robberies. Eventually, he faced charges of arm robbery during an attempt to rob a jewelry store. New Jack pistol whipped a clerk who had already handed over the jewelry. Caught on security cameras, he served a two-year prison sentence at Alto State Prison. And while behind bars, he devoted himself to weightlifting, significantly improving his physical condition. New Jack claimed to have benched about 460 pounds during this period. Following his release, New Jack briefly dabbled in college, but eventually dropped out. He chose to become a bounty hunter instead. For the next decade, he apprehended criminals who had violated their parole. In an interview with Hannibal, he revealed being hooked after his first successful job and making a substantial amount of money from it. And I've heard you say you got some justifiable homicides out of your bounty hunting days. Uh, what were those over? Just people trying to get away or people trying to, to kill you and you have to protect yourself? Basically, yeah. Despite rumors of him being involved in justifiable homicides, it's important to note that New Jack never actually really took a life during this. There were four situations where you had a, a justifiable homicide trying to bring someone back. That never happened. No, I didn't make it up. Somebody else did. Somebody in, in wrestling in, in the locker room made it up, and I just went with it, you know what I mean? And I thought it was funny, and for a long time, that was like the, the running joke, you know what I mean? New Jack killed four people. I never killed anybody. Following his release from prison, New Jack rekindled his passion for football by playing semi-professionally. It was during this time that he crossed paths with Ray Candy, a star in Jim Crockett Promotions, who would become a significant influence in New Jack's career. Ray imparted invaluable advice to New Jack, urging him to create something completely unique and unseen in the world of wrestling. And inspired by the 1991 action film New Jack City, directed by Mario Van Peebles, Jerome adopted the moniker, New Jack and began training under the North Georgia Wrestling Alliance. In the following year, New Jack achieved a major accomplishment by winning the World Tag Team Championship with his partner Homeboy. It was through Ray Candy's support that New Jack made his debut in Memphis-based United States Wrestling Association, or the USWA, in 1992. Eventually, the USWA was purchased by WCW, leading to conflicts between Jim Cornette and Jim Hurd. Cornette, leaning more towards a conservative approach that focused on in-ring action rather than gimmicky storylines, decided to create Smoky Mountain Wrestling. All of the other professional wrestling programs these days, they're politically correct. They're watered down, sanitized, vanilla. They're afraid to offend anybody. But Smoky Mountain Wrestling has something to offend everybody, and they love every minute of it. As a labor of love for the business, Cornette managed to secure a local television deal, broadcasting Smoky Mountain Wrestling to around seven different states in the U.S. 
New Jack officially joined SMW in July of 1994, teaming up with Mustafa Saeed, and later AC Connor, who we all remember as D'Lo Brown. And they formed the Gangstas. Together, their goal was to be a controversial heel team that deliberately provoked the mainly white redneck fan base, capitalizing on the racial tension surrounding the Rodney King incident and the OJ Simpson's trials that was going on during that time. New Jack's unbashedly provocative promos earned him a reputation as the ultimate antagonist, constantly taunting and infuriating the audience. His energy just cut the best promos. One infamous promo featured New Jack giving a shout out to OJ Simpson and encouraged him to keep up the good work. Mustafa Saeed served as New Jack's hype man during these promos, and Mustafa also had his fair share of rumors, like being arrested for smoking pencil shavings in a hotel lobby and attacking a cop, a story that New Jack recounted in the Dark Side of the Ring episode. Now look, we're gonna go in the we're gonna go in the cemetery, alright? We're gonna go in here, we're gonna show these people that we're not scared of Undertaker, you know what I'm saying? Around the mid-1990s, Smoky Mountain Wrestling had established a truce with WWE, leading to talent exchanges that benefited both parties. One of these exchanges involved The Undertaker, leading to Taker to clash against the Gangstas in a handicap, then tag match consecutively on April 7th and 8th. New Jack faced a unique challenge during the match, as he was unable to communicate with The Undertaker. Prior to the match, he had undergone a tooth extraction, making verbal communication quite difficult. So we go to Walmart. I go in the toy section and I bought this baby doll. It was about this high. New Jack purchased a baby doll and attached it to a noose, and he ran around with the baby doll and screaming when he was provoked by Taker. New Jack managed to get a significant reaction out of the crowd without saying anything. And despite the controversy surrounding this segment, Undertaker actually admired the bit, stating, Jack, if they put my character over like that in WWF, it would be so much easier to do. He said, but what you did was the way it was supposed to be done. This incident earned New Jack the respect of The Undertaker. In another controversial moment, New Jack reenacted the infamous beating of Rodney King in reverse, leading to a riot that required a police escort for their safety. Due to the escalating intensity and backlash, Smoky Mountain Wrestling had to release a statement clarifying that their views expressed by the gangsters did not align with the promotion's views itself. As far as the departure, there are two perspectives on how the gangsters left Smoky Mountain for ECW. Jim Cornette mentioned that he gave New Jack and Mustafa a two-month notice to find work elsewhere. And, and I gave him a three-month notice. I said, guys, you've wrestled everybody. I ain't got nothing else to do. We're losing spot shows because, to be quite honest, a lot of the local fire departments, it wasn't they wanted to see these heels get the shit kicked out of them. They just didn't want to see these heels. I called Paul trying to get him a spot in ECW, but at the same time, New Jack had evidently called and either talked to him or Todd Gordon. They didn't like the idea of us leaving. They was just like, Jack, don't go now. And I was like, my run is almost up here. ECW is paying me a lot more money, so I'm gonna go ahead and go. So me and Jim Cornette, we kind of fell out at the time. We cool now, but we fell out at the time because I went on jump ship and went to ECW. Regardless, ticket sales were plummeting and the gangsters were one of the reasons. Represented by Todd Gordon, Heyman felt enticed to offer the gangsters a significant amount of money prompting New Jack to leave Smoky Mountain Wrestling behind. New Jack found a perfect fit in ECW, known for its more extreme style of wrestling. The matches featured a heightened level of violence and grit. Upon joining ECW, New Jack increased his substance use, with his drug of choice being cocaine. He spent about $200 a week on cocaine during this period. Combine that with his desire to want to top everybody, New Jack was going to be an ideal candidate for the ECW roster. The promotion's extreme rules allowed for the use of weapons, enhancing the masochistic pop that fans eagerly anticipate. While suspended one day for a locker room mishap, New Jack was helping staple carpet when he got the idea to use it in the ring, employing a technique where he would staple his hand reinforced with tape to give the illusion that he was stapling his opponent's foreheads. During an ECW house show in 1995, the gangsters faced off with the Dudleys, but not Devon and Bubba Ray, but Dances with Dudley and Dudley Dudley. The match took a brutal turn as all four wrestlers engaged in extra stiff shots, 
Dances with Dudley in particular delivered a stiff shot to New Jack. New Jack didn't take this lightly. Seeking revenge, New Jack waited backstage after the match and legitimately attacked Dances with Dudley, striking him in the back of the head with a club. This altercation resulted in Dances with Dudley needing several stitches, and even the ECW alumni Mikey Whipwreck got injured while trying to intervene to stop the fight. A year later, New Jack introduced the infamous 187 chair drop finisher in a match against wrestler Chad Austin. This move involved diving off of the top rope with a steel chair and landing on the opponent's head. However, New Jack didn't stop there. He proceeded to relentlessly strike Austin's leg five times with the chair, ultimately breaking his leg. This brutal attack was a response to Austin's perceived rudeness during the planning of the match back in the locker room. In 1997, during a match with the Dudley Boys, New Jack and Devon took the fight into the crowd for one of New Jack's most memorable matches. He leafed off an arena balcony onto Devon strapped to a table. However, matches like these caused conflicts with Heyman, who believed New Jack was risking retirement for both himself and his opponent. New Jack disagreed, however, considering it as part of his job to get that much needed pop that the crowd has been craving. When TNN was around, you didn't put my shit on, on on TV because you said that they didn't want no stabbing, no blood, da 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 da. But when we was trying to get kicked off the air, you showed all my matches all the fucking time, and then you blamed me for us getting kicked off TNN, mother. And you was the one that got uh, edited the show. You put the shit on TV, and you fucking knew what the fuck you was doing, and you put me out there as a mother sacrificial lamb to take the heat for your punk ass. This leads us to the mass transit incident. On November 23, 1996, a 17-year-old Eric Kulaz, wielding a bus driver attire, was backstage looking like security and pitched a Ralph Cramden gimmick to Paul Heyman. Eric convinced ECW owner Paul Heyman that he was trained by Killer Kowalski and was given the name Mass Transit. However, Eric lied about his age, claiming to be 21. According to interviews with the Blue Meanie, the mass transit character lacked locker room etiquette. Go in the locker room, put your bags down, sit down, mouth closed, ears open, yes sir, no sir. You know, I'm drinking in the drinks and <clears throat> he pops down next to Taz and lights up a cigarette. This kid's like lighting up a cigarette and you know, Taz is like, what the fuck? <laughs> and attempted to direct the match with the gangsters instead of letting the veterans guide him. This angered New Jack, whose substance abuse amplified the situation. That's one of the most disrespectful things that you could do as a wrestler. This incident escalated when Mass Transit wanted New Jack to gig him, practically asking New Jack to make him bleed to maximize the pop. There's a lot of things a person with experience would know to do. And a person with experience and proper training would know, never let somebody else cut you. New Jack, eager for the match, informed Heyman, what I do to this kid, people are going to be talking about in 10 years. And he wasn't wrong. The match turned into a bloodbath, with New Jack dominating and mass transit turning into a stuffed pig. At some point, these guys are going to let up, and this is yeah. all part of the show. I, I thought they were going to let up. I, did, I didn't know. After I got hit with that toaster, you know, I didn't see him until I got picked up by my hair and stabbed in the face 10 times. You could hear Mass Transit's father try to intervene, revealing his son's actual age. It's the worst night of my life. Do you wish he just never went there that night? Of course. You know, uh, I mean, I, I wish I could take back the night. But this only fueled New Jack's rage. New Jack ascended to the top rope with a chair and jumped onto Mass Transit and ran a promo, hoping that he bled to death. Three years after this, Mass Transit's parents would sue ECW and almost force them out of business. Dreamed of making it to the big time. What were your dreams? What did you think wrestling could lead to? You know, making it the WWF, the WCW, you know, being famous. Being rich? It's a big part of it. The lawsuit was thrown out, however, as the jury discovered that Mass Transit lied and the father used a racial slur to New Jack. New Jack had won the case due to Mass Transit's false claims about his age and training. New Jack thanked his attorney for helping him push the charges. Despite the tragic death of Mass Transit at the age of 22 from complications of gastric bypass surgery, New Jack couldn't care less. Oh. Did you feel some type of way when he died? No. I think it After ECW declared bankruptcy in April of 2001, New Jack wrestled for XPW for about two years. After New Jack signed with Extreme Pro Wrestling in 2001, 
He was paired with Vic Grimes, another former ECW superstar. However, this decision turned out to be a mistake. Due to previous beef between Grimes and New Jack, New Jack was pissed from their last match at the 2000 ECW pay-per-view, Living Dangerously. New Jack saved Balls Mahoney and sparked a sudden match between him and Grimes. The fight traversed all around the arena, which eventually resulted them climbing a steel structure of about 20 feet high. The planned spot involved both wrestlers landing on two tables. However, Grimes began to hesitate and got afraid of the fall. But New Jack, he was not willing to disappoint the crowd. He grabbed Grimes by the arm and forced the jump. And unfortunately, the move went horribly wrong. I pulled him down on top of me and I hit that first table. He did his flip and he caught up with me. And his back ended up against my head. And it slammed my head against the floor and it cracked my skull. And I had brain fluid coming out of my nose and my ear. And I got nerve damage. And I would never be able to see out on a red eye again in my life. And I get headaches. And sometimes my eyes get like bloodshot like they are now. For no reason. Then I go three or four days and I don't sleep. Hey, but that's part of New Jack being New Jack. Nearly a year later, New Jack and Vic Grimes were granted a rematch in a scaffolding match at XPW's Free Fall. I fell off balconies, I lost my sight, I broke my f damn arm, I broke my leg, I cracked my sternum, I lost my sight, and mother f I'm still standing! The opponents wrestled on a 40-foot scaffold with over 12 tables stacked inside the ring to break the fall. However, Grimes was unaware that New Jack was out for revenge that night. Angry not just by Grimes' negligence in the previous match, but also because he didn't even attempt to check on his well-being while in the hospital. And New Jack sought to settle the score. He did this by purchasing a stun gun and then suddenly used it on Vic while on top of the scaffolding before throwing him off with the apparent intent to terminate him. Because I don't got sight in my right eye because of big stupid fucking ass. That's why I'm I'm sorry that Big got up and walked away, or they stressing him out. I'm sorry for that. New Jack openly admitted to his intentions that night to take Vic out, and after the match, he told Grimes, "Now we're even," and they never spoke ever again. Do you think there was ever a match where you think you went too far? Well, I can name a few of them, but I'm saying. <laughs> Probably Gypsy Joe. This period marked a further descent for New Jack, as he was snorting cocaine every night. At an indie event, New Jack was scheduled to face Gypsy Joe, a Puerto Rican wrestler at the age of 69. New Jack initially hesitated about the match. However, he was assured by the promoter that Gypsy Joe was as tough as nails. There was beef being established between New Jack and Gypsy Joe with the latter attempting to school New Jack and refusing to sell his moves throughout the match. And in a fit of rage, New Jack legitimately attacked Gypsy Joe in a shoot that featured a barbed wire bat, a chain, and anything else he could find. The Tennessee crowd fueled New Jack's anger, hurling racial slurs and middle fingers at him. The confrontation spilled into the crowd, resulting in the match being deemed a no contest. A viral video of the incident circulated among tape collectors and later on the internet. New Jack was arrested that night for assault. It's evident why New Jack never appeared on WWE television due to his controversial and dangerous matches, despite several rumors circulating about WWE wanting to sign New Jack on multiple occasions. I went down to WWE, they gave me what they call four fingers up, a tryout, and fucking uh, 04. Malenko came up to me, he said, Jack, whatever you do, do not go up to Vince and speak to him. Now, I don't know if he was telling me not to do it to fuck with me, or if that's just the rule of the locker room. But he walked by, and I'm like, hey, how you doing, New Jack? Mm. I'm like, thanks for bringing me down, whatever the fuck, I hope I give you what you like. And I was done. And he looked at me like, okay, I'm like, nice meet you. I walked on down the hall, and I started laughing. About 15 minutes later, I went back and looked at the lineup sheet at the board with the right name on it. Yeah. Mine had been swiped off. No way. One included a plan for him and Paul Heyman, which was set at the ECW One Night Stand revival. However, New Jack insisted on being at the show and being a part of it, but Heyman only had permission to allow him to be on via satellite. Another rumor was in 2004, when New Jack was supposed to face young John Cena. The plan was for New Jack to stab Cena, referencing a rumor that he stabbed a guy in Florida. However, WWE withdrew the offer upon realizing that the stabbing incident actually happened. This incident was during New Jack's tenure with the Thundering Wrestling Federation, and it was between him and Hunter Red. 
In Jacksonville, Florida, New Jack was booked for a match against William Jason Lane, also known as Hunter Red, a green wrestler, also known as an inexperienced wrestler. New Jack attempted to discuss the match plans with Hunter Red, but he ended up just shrugging it off, stating that he would just do whatever. I started talking to him about the match and any other. He didn't know what I was talking about. He didn't know what kayfabe meant. He didn't know if he was a face or a heel. He didn't know what the word color meant. He didn't know nothing. As the match began, Hunter Red started delivering relatively stiff shots to New Jack, pushing him into the corner and attempting to force him over. This triggered New Jack, who in a shocking turn of events, pulled a knife conveniently from his pocket and proceeded to stab Hunter Red nine times in the back, abruptly ending the match. The authorities were called and New Jack was arrested. New Jack spent three weeks in jail following this, during which he claimed that the entire incident was a work. However, despite the initial denial, Hunter Red actually approached New Jack and proposed turning the incident into an angle. He offered to drop the charges if New Jack would travel with him and push the storyline. New Jack, however, just insisted on Hunter Red dropping the charges first. Hunter Red complied, dropped the charges. He said, you take me on the road with you? I said, done! Clean my front seat out tomorrow. When the court charged the drop, I got the fuck out of Florida and ain't been back since. Fuck him. But New Jack left Florida and never talked to him ever again. New Jack continued to navigate the indie circuit throughout the rest of his career. He had a notable stint in TNA, teaming up with Sandman and, and even was a part of the TNA's 2010 ECW reunion show. However, as the late 2010s arrived, the toll of New Jack's age and years of substance abuse began to manifest. In 2016, Young collapsed from several blood clots throughout his legs, back, and lungs while walking home from an event. Despite this health setback, he still persisted in, in keeping his semi-retirement and still participated in matches. Here are three more controversies that happened with New Jack in the 2010s. From 2009 to 2011, Young was in a relationship with Terry Runnels. This ended in a lawsuit filed by Runnels after their relationship. She accused him of selling and spreading naked photos of her, as well as spreading defaming information on Facebook. New Jack was insistent that everything he said on the platform was the truth, and his fans running the page were the ones spreading the rumors. He unapologetically stated that sending someone naked photos isn't a crime. In 2012, following Jim Ross's heart attack during a live taping of Monday Night Raw, New Jack took to Twitter to express his disdain for Jerry Lar, accusing him of receiving more support than Memphis wrestler James Kamala, who had both of his legs amputated due to complication with diabetes by 2012. New Jack married Jennifer Young and one of his sons was named Washington Heights, who came out later as a drag queen. In 2020, it was revealed that New Jack had disowned Heights for years after posting on Wikipedia about being a drag queen in his bio. New Jack believed that the news being on his Wikipedia page would push his fans away. Heights in an interview stated, I don't want to think he was ashamed of me. I think it was more of he didn't know how to damage control with his fans. He didn't have a proper answer for his fans, so his best way of handling it was to move on from it. Despite New Jack denying the claim that he disowned her, a Facebook Live session exposed his continued hateful attitude towards Heights. I would just like to say to you, little oh you know who you are. And you're not my son, you bitch. Once he said that, I was like, okay, so I know where he stands, but he still never reached out to me directly. I had people send me that video and be like, hey, just so you know, he said this. However, by the time of his passing on May 14th, 2021, at the age of 58 from a heart attack in his Greensboro home, Washington Heights had forgiven her father, understanding that he was proud and cared, but struggled with knowing how to express it. The legacy of New Jack, the controversial and extreme figure in pro wrestling, is a tale of contradiction and complexities. Born into a traumatic childhood, he coped with the trauma by idolizing it and making himself stronger. While New Jack was notorious for his brutal and excessive wrestling style, his openness about his violent mindset, lack of fear, and willingness to embrace controversy drew both admiration and disdain. New Jack fans appreciated his authenticity and willingness to push the limits. His dedication to engaging with fans, signing autographs, and going out of his way to connect with the audience endeared him to many. His impact on the hardcore wrestling scene and his embodiment of the extreme world of ECW made him a beloved figure for those who relished the visceral and violent nature of these matches. However, the controversies surrounding New Jack cannot be ignored. Accusations of assault, attempted murder, and his unapologetic attitude towards his extreme actions painted a dark side to his legacy. The disregard for his opponent's safety coupled with a brazen demeanor 
earned him a considerable amount of disdain within and outside the wrestling industry. The man behind the character was a complex individual, shaped by his troubled past and resilient spirit. While he presented himself as unrepentant and often justified his extreme actions as part of his job, glimpses of a loving and friendly side emerged when he opened up. The Beyond the Mat documentary highlighted the journalist's bond with New Jack during the filming of the documentary. Of all the wrestlers I met, the last one I expected to bond with was New Jack. But ultimately, New Jack's legacy is a matter of personal interpretation. Some may remember him as a man who overcame adversity, while others focused on the showman who redefined boundaries in pro wrestling. The mix of admiration and contempt he stirred reflects the polarizing nature of his impact on the wrestling world. Thanks for watching. I want to get out of this fucking business. I'm sick of this shit. Vince McMahon has single-handedly destroyed the wrestling. The wrestling ain't shit no more, bro. And right now, I'm using wrestling almost as a resume to get to somewhere else. This ain't shit but a resume now. Because wrestling can suck my nuts, bro.